Thank you, Alex, for that great look into Chrome Browser Cloud Management features. So hi, everybody. I'm Fletcher Oliver. I'm a Chrome Browser Customer Engineer. And today, I'm going to be sharing some tips and techniques on how you can gain more control on your browser extensions. This is what I'm going to be covering today in this session. First, we'll talk about why you should revisit your current method of managing extensions in Chrome and what tools are available to help. Then I'll show you how to discover the scope of your user extensions install base using Chrome Browser Cloud Management and how to set policies to keep your company secure. And finally, we'll go through some in-depth demos of some upcoming Chrome extension management tools. Many businesses have either started an extension management initiative recently or are in the process of revisiting their current approach. Extensions have the potential ability to access data on the sites that your users visit, as well as the devices that they're using to browse the web. So it's very important to get a management plan in place. So whether you plan to do heavy or light management of extensions in Chrome, it's a recommended best practice to first get an idea of what is out there in your environment. So why is it important to know what extensions are currently installed on your users' machines before you start applying policies? Because many extensions aren't harmless add-ons, like say an extension that displays cat pictures when you open up a new tab. Many extensions are actually necessary on how employees do their jobs. And if you don't know what they are before you start managing them, you can end up accidentally disabling something important. For instance, some users might have a few extensions installed that help them organize their day through to-do lists, note-taking, or help composing emails. Many video conference tools also require an extension to function, as do many third-party applications, all of which are especially vital to users' workflows with so many people working from home. Or more importantly, these may be accessibility extensions, such as an extension that boosts the volume for the hearing impaired, or an extension that reads web pages for the visually impaired. A quick side note, there's tons of accessibility-focused extensions from Google Translate to read aloud tools to help meet the needs of your employees. I've linked a list down in the resource section if you'd like to learn more. Knowing what's out in your environment first will greatly reduce the amount of help desk tickets you get once you make any changes. Extension management needs to be done. It will create a more positive experience for your users as long as it's done carefully. The feedback we've received from admins doing extension management is that many organizations struggle on how to discover this information on what extensions are out there and how far of a reach those extensions have into user data. Knowing where they can find this information can be tricky. Traditional application management tools sometimes struggle with pulling this necessary information. When users install an extension, they're prompted to agree to the rights that extensions require to run. But for admins, it's tough to discover what those rights were after the fact. This is because the permissions or rights that an extension requires to run aren't written in the title of the extension, and this information usually isn't documented by the developer in the Chrome Web Store listing. On a side note, one piece of good news is that the Chrome Web Store recently added new transparency requirements for developers about the privacy practices of extensions. The Chrome Web Store now requires publishers to declare a few important pieces of information. First, that the data that is gathered from an extension is not being sold to third parties outside of approved use cases. Second, that it isn't being used or transferred for purposes that are unrelated to the item's core functionality. And third, that it's not being used or transferred to determine credit worthiness or for lending purposes. This requirement is a great improvement that aligns with Google's continued commitment to a more transparent web experience. But moving back to extension permissions, these are actually embedded within the manifest file of the extension itself. This is a JSON file that contains tons of information about the extension, like versioning information, how it works, and more importantly, the access it needs to run. This file can be hard to read, even with custom scripts, as it tends to provide unreliable information. You could also try to get this information by directly asking your users about what extensions they use on a regular basis, but that can be disruptive to end users and time consuming, especially if you're having to manage hundreds or even thousands of users. The good news is that now Google has instituted methods to make this much easier. 
In the last session, Alex showed you how to use Chrome Browser Cloud Management to manage your browser settings. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. You can also use the Admin Console to discover more information about the extensions that are already installed in your environment. And once you have a better understanding of your extensions, you can apply policies to manage them. Even if your company already has an extension management practice in place, you can still benefit from the reporting features within Chrome Browser Cloud Management. If you're already blocking all extensions except for the ones that you allow, you can use Chrome Browser Cloud Management to confirm your existing settings are properly configured. And you can also gain some insights on what permissions the extensions that you allow actually have. And if you're not managing extensions at all, or just blocking a select few and allowing the rest, Chrome Browser Cloud Management will provide some great insights into what extensions are installed and what the impact would be to your end users if you did start blocking a certain permission or extension. So the first step is to enroll your browsers into Chrome Browser Cloud Management, which Alex showed you how to do in the previous session. Once your browsers are enrolled, I'd recommend that you give it a bit of time for the solution to gather the information on the extensions that are installed to populate the apps and extension usage report. A couple of days to a week should be enough. Once the information is fully populated, you can click on the extensions themselves to view what permissions they require to run and examples of where they're installed within your enrolled browsers. It's also a good idea to review what these permissions are so you can know what you will or will not allow within your environment. Clicking on the permission itself will take you to a description of what it can do. You can also allow, block, or force install extensions directly within Chrome Browser Cloud Management by selecting the appropriate option. When you're trying to evaluate risk, just note that risk is relative. What might be risky for your environment may not be for someone else. So how do you know if an extension is risky or not? Consider the source of the extension first. Does it come from a vendor that you trust? Is it related to an application already running in your environment? If you still have some questions, you can always reach out to the extension vendor and ask why they're requesting a specific extension permission. In most cases, they'll be willing to provide insight and scope on how much access the extension actually uses. Once you have an idea of what permissions or extensions you'd like to block, I'd recommend that you use the Extension Takeout API feature to export all the data out to a CSV file. I'll provide you with some links to get you started with this API at the end of the session. But right now, let's hop over to an export that I did earlier today to see what it looks like. So here's what the CSV looks like within Google Sheets. I can see the name, the number installed, if it's been disabled, and the permissions and examples of where it's installed. So let's say I wanted to search for a particular permission. I could create a column and say, I'm gonna search for the storage permission. And then I can add a formula to look for which particular extension has that certain permission. And then I can filter by that. So I'll filter the ones that say it's true and clean out the blank series as well. And here I could see if I block the storage permission, these are all the extensions that would be blocked. So this is a great way to see the scope or what the user impact would be if you ended up blocking a particular extension or permission. Once you have this information, then you can decide on how you want to manage extensions. So let's take a look at how you can do this using Chrome Browser Cloud Management. Within Chrome Browser Cloud Management, you have a few different options on how you can manage extensions. You can allow all extensions except for the ones you choose to block. You can also block all extensions except for the ones that you allow. Or you can manage extensions by the permissions or rights that they need to run and the websites that they have access to. I'll select the set proxy and storage permissions. Now any extensions with these two permissions will be blocked or disabled and you can click on an individual extension and be able to customize and manage by permission that way as well. Now that we've gone over discovering what extensions are in your environment and how to block or allow those extensions with Chrome Browser Cloud Management, let's see some of the latest extension management features in action. So the first thing I'd like to show you is Extension Workflow, a new feature that will be launching soon. So let's say your user wants to request an extension. They'd start out by finding the extension they want to add in the Chrome Web Store. For this example, I'll select a Google Earth extension. Normally, they'd see an Add to Chrome button, 
but with extension workflow turned on, instead they'll see request. Push the request button and the users will see a confirmation message, along with some indicators on what sort of rights this particular extension needs in order to run. Here the user really wants the Google Earth extension, so they click the request button and submit their request. This is what it looks like for the user, quick and easy. But let's see what it looks like for an administrator. OK, so here I am in the Google Admin Console in the Apps and Extensions section. I'll click on the tab that says Requests. In this tab, I could see one of my users requested the Google Earth extension. So I click on it and see a link to the Chrome Web Store listing where I can get a bit more information. I could also click on the permissions that are listed on the extension to see what sort of rights it would require to run. And when I do that, I'm taken directly to the developer documentation for that permission. To approve or deny, I just click on these three little dots. Denying will block any browser from using this extension or having it installed. Approving it will add this extension to my allow list. I'm not seeing any risk with this extension, so I'll go ahead and approve this for my user. Now let's go back to the user's machine and see what happens from their view. Back on the user's machines, they'll get a notification that the extension has been approved for installation. They can click on the pop-up and go right to the Chrome Web Store where they can add it to their browser. If you're receiving a lot of requests for an extension, you could approve and force install it so the extension shows up automatically on all the managed browsers within that specific organizational unit or even across your whole organization. So not only does this give your users more say on the extensions that they can use on their corporate machines, but it's a great way to support the IT team's security and productivity goals. We will continue to make enhancements to the extension workflow feature with future roadmap items, including the ability for users to enter a business justification for an extension, provide custom blocking messages, and integrations with third-party ticketing systems for the approve and deny functionality. Next up, we have a great demo that I'm excited to share with you because we've never shown it publicly before. Extension Details allows you to click on any extension within the Apps and Extension Report and view more of the information you need to know in order to make an informed decision to keep your company and users safe. Note that this feature is currently under development and the look feel, and functionality may change before it goes into our trusted tester phase in the near future. So for example, let's select Google Keep Chrome extension. This is the extension detail page for the Google Keep Chrome extension. Here I can see the extension ID, which is the unique fingerprint of this individual extension. I can also click here and show the Chrome Web Store listing for the extension, so I can learn a little bit more. I can also see when the extension was last updated and how long it's been listed on the Chrome Web Store. I can see who the developer of the extension is, and I can also click to view the privacy policy of that individual extension. I can see if it's a theme or if it was developed by Google or hosted in the Chrome Web Store. When I scroll down, I can see the requested permissions and if they have access to user data. I can click on any of these and be able to learn a little bit more information about what access this extension can have, either to the sites that my users are visiting or the devices that they're browsing from. Under requested website access, you can see what reach this extension has either to read or change data on specific websites and also gain an example of where this extension is installed within your environment. This feature will be in Trusted Tester soon and again, if you're interested in signing up to be a trusted tester, you can find that link in the resources below. Earlier, I talked about the extension takeout API feature. This API is run via Python script to generate the CSV file that shows all the extensions that are installed, where they're installed, and what permissions they have. This is just one of the many APIs available to help with your extension management. If you want to learn more about APIs or how to manage extensions, the enterprise team has been hard at work to bring you tons of documentation. So have a look through and get started in hardening the security of your browser. First would be the managing extensions in your enterprise tech paper. This covers all the different options that are out there for managing extensions. I also have a few blog entries that cover managing extensions, using the extension takeout API, and how to publish your own custom extensions. And for those that are a little bit more visual learners, we have some great YouTube videos on setting up the extension takeout API 
and how to manage extensions within Chrome browser cloud management. We also have a program known as Trusted Tester, which is a program for administrators who want to help test out new features within their environment. So if you're interested in becoming a trusted tester for any of our upcoming projects, sign up via this link, which is also available within the resource section. Thanks for your time today. Now I'm going to turn it over to Helen, who's going to show you how to navigate Chrome updates within your organization. Thanks.